I was having problems with it binding. And I couldn't really figure out why it was binding. Um, well, until I did, and then I was like, <laughs> one of those moments like, Picking back up uh, on this mill here, I'm going to tell you about uh, an issue that, uh, that popped up that um, I wasn't aware of, and but of course now that I think about it, it makes perfect sense. So here on the mill, and I'm turning this here so you can see it a little better. So here on the mill, the cluster gear assembly inside here. I was having problems with it binding and I couldn't really figure out why it was binding um, well until I did and then I was like <laughs> one of those moments like of course that makes perfect sense so the cluster gear assembly was binding on the uh, the lower bushing and I couldn't figure out why so it would turn a little bit and then it would bind and I'm thinking well something's cocked something's got to be cocked so I ended up stopping the camera taking it all out getting in there and uh, one thing uh, there was a washer that was looks like it was hardened on one side not on the other I found that was actually upside down so good catch got that repaired put it all back together uh, you know, nice and, and lubricated and greased up, and uh, it, it was nice and smooth uh, on my hand. You know, in my hands, it was running great. I'm thinking, all right, oh, I got this. Oh, I'm not, no, I don't. Okay, so put it all back together, and and it doesn't work. It's binding just like it was before. Well, now I got a problem because I've already taken it apart once. Actually twice, because, you know, it counted the first time. So I'm now taking this, this cluster assembly apart twice and put it back together twice. I don't want to do this again. Then I had one of those aha moments. I said, man, this, this makes perfect sense. I know exactly what's going on here. I tightened down the bottom set screw. And when I tightened down the bottom set screw, I realized that it was actually pushing the entire cluster assembly to the back of the quill, the quill housing assembly, and it was binding the shaft. You know, it was one of those moments you realize, hey, you know what? Now I understand why the set screws have two parts. It is a hollow locking set screw. Two parts, main set screw like you're familiar with, and then the second part which looks like half of a set screw that goes in on top of it to lock it in place like, uh, like you would if you were using uh, two nuts on a bolt. I couldn't figure out why they required that and it's kind of one of those moments like oh yeah I should have known that but I did so they do that so that you can adjust the tension on the bushing so it doesn't spin for one because it's got a countersink that the set screw goes into on the bushing for one, that it doesn't spin, but also so you don't have to tighten it down so tight and then create a binding issue, which is what I had. So, binding issue corrected, and I learned something. And hopefully you did too if you run into this problem. And if you already know about this, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now we both know, right? So. Things to keep in mind, things that I probably should have known, but 
makes perfect sense, but unfortunately wasn't thinking through that one like I probably should have. Live and learn. Okay, picking back up where we left off. Um, as I kick the camera, picking back up where we left off. Okay, that is in place. Right, the challenge here is going to be getting this lined up like it's supposed to be. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and oil everything in here with some oil. There is another double locking set screw that secures the worm cradle assembly. Make sure everything is still moving. After we learn about our last experience with that. Snug it down. That thing's still moving like it's supposed to. Very good.
Oh yeah, that's a lot better.